call the meeting of the City Council Finance Committee for Monday, February 3rd, 2020 at 7 p.m. to order. <coughs> Good evening, everybody. Before we um, start our agenda this evening, we have a special guest with us to, tonight, um, our Honorable Mayor, Robert Sullivan's here, and he would like to address us. He has some news for us. Thank you, Madam Chairman, members of the committee. Um, thank you again for having me here. I just want to give you a couple quick updates. Um, last week, uh, Senator Brady had me sit in uh, on a one-on-one -on -one meeting with uh, Senate President Karen Spilka, talked about Brockton and how we really need to create the synergy and continue the relationship with the funding. Um, so that was really, really positive, uh, and, and I look forward to continuing conversations with her. Um, I also have um, uh, Manny Gomes here um, in terms of uh, Reacquainting himself with all of you, uh, I recently named Captain Gomes uh, the acting chief. I also want to thank Captain Steve Williamson for his uh, dedication to the city of Brockton uh, as, as my former uh, mayor and uh, now Councilor at Large had, had named Steve to act in that capacity. But many of you have known Manny. He had already served in the capacity of, of chief under uh, Mayor Linda Belzotti. I do want to just say that um, I wasn't attempting to slight any of you uh, when the swearing-in ceremony happened. I actually was in the State House that day. Um, we expected it to just be Manny, his wife, and his family in the clerk's office, and of course it got bigger than that. Um, and the city clerk swore him in and was gracious enough to host it here. Um, and I did have a conversation with the council president about that. Um, I wasn't here either, but, but he's here tonight to answer any questions or reacquaint himself with you. Um, and I also just wanted to let you know that um, I recently told the department heads on our Wednesday department head meeting that I want to see office doors open here at City Hall. Uh, the city clerk and the elections always have their door open. It's welcoming. Certain departments have their doors shut, and those days are going to stop. We're going to open the doors, welcome the general public. So I just wanted to kind of give you an update on that as well. Uh, Acting Chief. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Good evening, uh, Acting Chief. Congratulations. Good evening. Thank you. Uh, I just want to say thank you, and I look forward to uh, working with every counselor here and uh, bring a lot of good things to fruition. Thank you. Well, thank I'd you. like to say thank you personally. I know you're already working on some stuff in Ward 7 already over the weekend, so it's greatly appreciated. You got back to us, and you'll be uh, taking care of some issues we have at DW Fields Park. You took care of it personally, so I appreciate it. So thank you very much. Councilors, is in Councilor Yanieri. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Madam uh, Chairman. And good evening, Chief Gomes. I don't like this acting ter interim and all that type of stuff. You're, you're in there as the chief, and that's what I believe the uh, job is uh, going to hold you to do, just as you did some, uh, some few years back. And uh, I do have to say, uh, it's the first time in my 17 years I've seen a chief return. So it does tell us something. It tells us something to the fact that we definitely know what type of a person you are and we know just what you're going to do in these next uh, um, many months or, or years or however you serve as the, uh, the interim. But um, I, I'm glad to have you back and I think that you're going to, um, you're going to do some things that uh, probably you may have left off uh, not doing when you were there five years ago or five and a half years ago. So, um, and just in light of that, I think, um, I think uh, coming from my own opinion, and, and maybe I can speak for the other members of the council as well, I'm not sure, but in any case, the way I feel, um, I think you know we have a couple of things that do necessarily need to be addressed in this city, and that's one word that's been used for the last, I don't know how many years, and it's called enforcement. And you know that at both ends. Um, and you and I have discussed this um, just recently and even during the whole, um, even during the campaign prom, uh, uh, process and even with things that I had uh, addressed with you um, that I was getting from people out in, in the street when I was out doing my campaigning. Um, and that's one thing I, I do want to see us do. And uh, I enlightened when I was running, um, I put on my card and I said the one thing I do want to see is it's time that we have a traffic division and not a traffic commission, because it's putting a lot of burden on the traffic commission to what they're doing, uh, Chief, and uh, it's tough. It's very, very tough, and uh, everybody comes at us, and I think every ward council and every council knows that everybody's looking for a sign, and then they want the sign up, and then they want it enforced, and those are the things that aren't happening that uh, leaves us puzzled because we're doing what we feel is in the best interest of, of the city and, and, and our constituents, 
but sometimes we're not getting the help that we need. But I think with you and, and, and some new promises to, um, and I don't like to say promises, but a new effectiveness of how things are gonna run, I think those things are gonna change, and I think they have to change, you know what I mean? And they really, really do. So um, I just wanna put that out, I'm, again, speaking for myself, but I think I can speak for the councils as well. <clears throat> I think, um, excuse me, enforcement is the, is the most, the biggest thing that we have um, facing us and that we wanna see some, some cure, an all cure to. Um, and, I, and I think you're the right person for the job in that. Thank you. Well, thank you, Councilman, and uh, thank you for the kind words. Um, I want to tell you that we will have a traffic enforcement unit, and that uh, kind of runs parallel to a lot of the complaints that we get that are quality of life related. That's right. important in certain neighborhoods, and public safety and in, in, in some of these quality of life issues uh, have to be addressed. And traffic is a, is a large, com large component of that. So we, we will have a full-time unit for that. Yeah, well, and, I'm glad, and I'm, I'm glad to hear that because just in light of our situation over the weekend that transpired as well, even with a couple of our officers and, and, uh, and the other persons that were involved as, as well in that accident, I mean, sometimes there's got to be some type of an all-cure where, I, I don't know, it's, it's going to be hard for us to go back and teach everybody how to drive. But when I was reading just a few things on, on Facebook today and, and people making comments when they heard about that situation, um, one lady in, indicated that, that there's, there's no, I don't know, there's no understanding of how people drive today. You know, we, we, we drive through red lights, we stop at green lights, we drive through red and yellow lights, you know what I'm saying? We take, we take and put our leaf blink, left blinker on, we take a right, you know what I'm saying? And it, yeah. you know, it's just, it's, it's amazing. And I know it, it's tough, you know, and I live with every, Every day, every every minute, I I don't go to sleep dancing with sugar plums in my head. I hear people saying West Chestnut Street traffic, West Chestnut Street traffic. Okay, what about all the other streets that have traffic? <laughs> How do we cure that? We can't. But maybe there's a way we can get people that are sitting there that slows people down. When it slows them down, you know what? They find a different route. You know that as well as I do. But I don't want to expound on that. I just want to say welcome, welcome back, and and anything I can do, you know, I'm there. Thank you. I just, if I could also, I just want to give you a quick update. So uh, uh, Chief uh, was sworn in at 11 o'clock on Thursday. Uh, 8 o'clock, myself and the Chief met with DA Tim Cruz and Rick Savignano, a former judge, to talk about, um, much like what you just said, Council, how we can make Brockton a safer place. I also respectfully asked him to make sure that the unsolved murder of Kyle Yancey, who was killed on Belmont Street, uh, really, we need to ration that up. There's a lot of unsolved murders, and we need not to forget those uh, people that lost their lives and their loved ones that are still here. Um, I also want to tell you this morning at 8 o'clock, I was down at the police department for roll call at 8 o'clock. I wanted to thank all the brave men and women, uh, and I wanted to talk to them. And um, my, my youngest told me, don't bring donuts to police offices, Dad. Don't bring donuts. So I brought munchkins. So I thought that was a happy medium. Um, but again, we, uh, we're going to work together. City Council, my office, police department, fire department, DPW, that's how we're gonna make the community we call home a better place. And I also publicly wanna thank each and every one of you that came last week um, to my first community engagement meeting. It meant a lot to me as a mayor uh, and being out there and seeing all my friends in government out there. So thank you again. Any other questions for the chief or for me? I actually had a question for the, not a question, sure. just a, because I'm new to this chief, so welcome. I'd like to sit and chat a little bit about community policing and see what types of programs you have. My passion is violence prevention. And, um, you know, just pick your brain about a couple things and see what's going on and what fu future plans are uh, for community policing. My brother's a Boston police officer. He's on a bike unit there. So just kind of, you know, pick your brain and where Brockton's going I, with I, community I would, police. I would welcome that, and I, I want to let you know that uh, I plan on reaching out to all of you individually. We have some things that will uh, tie in to uh, the city council that I'd like to discuss with you that I think would uh, streamline uh, some, of the, some of the issues that you deal with that, that mm -hmm. involve police department. I want to stream that, uh, that along, and uh, uh, I, I welcome that, and we'll be doing that in the near future. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Council Cruz. Thank you. I just a quick minute. I just want to say great to have you back, Chief Gomes. It'll keep you off the soccer field so you don't get hurt. Oh. But, uh, I also want to take a minute and thank Captain Williamson and send our best out to Chief Crowell. Yeah. It's, it's been a tough job to be the acting because you don't have full authority and you're overseeing people, but you've done a great job. And, and our best wishes go to uh, Chief Crowley and, 
And just a quick question, the two officers that were in the, the accident uh, the other day, how are they doing? Uh, they're doing uh, much better. Uh, one of the officers uh, sustained a, a minor leg injury, that was the passenger. However, the, uh, the driver that was operating, uh, <coughs> Officer Scully, uh, he sustained a uh, substantial uh, eye laceration that, uh, that took, uh, took some work, but uh, we expect the full recovery. He's, uh, he's a tough kid and we'll welcome back. Good, good. We'll send him my wishes. Thank you. I will. And thank you. Uh, I received calls today, uh, both from the uh, state legislation as well as our local legislation. I have passed that on to him and his family. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, thank Chairman. you. Any other co uh, questions, counselors, or comments? Well, thank you, Mayor, and congratulations again, uh, Chief. And we're going to take a five minute recess. Thank you. Call the meeting of the Finance Committee back to order. Um, Councillor um, Rodriguez. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I'd like to uh, make a motion to take items 1 through 10 collectively. Second. A motion has been made and properly seconded. All those in favor? Madam Clerk, please um, read the appointments. Reappointment of Spencer Bennett as a special police officer of the city of Brockton for a one-year term ending January 2021. Invited Frank Vadaro, Lieutenant, School Police, Spencer Bennett, Special Police Officer. Reappointment of Alicia Fernandez as a special police officer of the city of Brockton for a one-year term ending January 2021. Invited Frank Vadaro, Lieutenant, School Police, Alicia Fernandez, Special Police Officer. Reappointment of Jonathan Drain as a special police officer of the city of Brockton for a one-year term ending January 2021. Invited Frank Vadaro, Lieutenant, School Police, Jonathan Drain, Special Police Officer. Reappointment of Michael Gomes as a special police officer of the city of Brockton for a one-year term ending January 2021. Invited Frank Vadaro, Lieutenant, School Police, Michael Gomes, Special Police Officer. Reappointment of Darnell Campbell as a special police officer of the city of Brockton for a one-year term ending January 2021. Invited Frank Vidaro, Lieutenant, School Police, Darnell Campbell, School Special Police Officer. Reappointment of Adelson Andrade as a special police officer of the city of Brockton for a one-year term ending January 2021. Invited Frank Vidaro, Lieutenant, School Police, Adelson Andrade, Special Police Officer. Reappointment of Daniel J. Vaughn as a special police officer of the city of Brockton for a one-year term ending January 2021. Invited Frank Vidaro, Lieutenant, School Police. Daniel J. Vaughn, special police officer. Reappointment of Jason Mosley as a special police officer of the city of Brockton for a one-year term ending January 2021. Invited Frank Vidaro, Lieutenant, School Police. Jason Mosley, special police officer. Reappointment of Kevin A. Smith as a special police officer <clears throat> of the city of Brockton for a one-year term ending January 2021. Invited Frank Vidaro, Lieutenant, School Police. Kevin A. Smith, Special Police Officer. Reappointment of Julie Miserol as a special police officer of the city of Brockton for a one-year term ending January 2021. Invited Frank Vidaro, Lieutenant, School Police. Julie Miserol, Special Police Officer. Thank you. Um, councilors, before we vote on these, we have invited uh, Lieutenant Vadaro here this evening to answer some questions. These are appointments of school police that we vote on at the beginning of every year, but um, Cap, uh, the Lieutenant's here and he's going to answer some questions and explain to us why they're um, special school police. Good evening. Thank you for being here, Lieutenant. Thank you for having me. Good evening, City Council members. Um, Councilor uh, Thompson. Thank you, Madam President, and uh, welcome, Lieutenant, and uh, thank you for your service uh, to our city. Um, I'm interested in understanding uh, what is a special police officer, what are their duties, and how are they different than a Brockton police officer? Okay, so I brought the city ordinance for special police officers with me here, and I'll just I'll review it briefly for the members that are new to this. So. In the city of Brockton, the mayor is subject to confirming by the city council member shall from time to time appoint <coughs> upon recommendation of the chief of police such numbers of special police officers as he shall deem proper. Such appointments shall expire on the 
sorry, my eyes are going, on the fourth Monday of January, succeeding the date of appointment. So, section B of 19.2 says, all special police officers shall be subject to the authority of the chief of police and may be assigned by him for duty, and when so assigned, they shall have all the power and duties of regular police officers, provided that unless assigned by the police duty, by the chief of police, no special police officer shall have such powers and duties. They shall devote as much of their time to the services of the city as the chief of police shall require, but shall not be entitled to pay from the city when not engaged in rendering services to the city. No special police officer shall exercise the power of authority or authority, I'm sorry, of a police officer of the city for any purpose, oh, I'm sorry, for any private, my eyes are gone, any private organization, corporation, or individual unless he has first been assigned by the chief of police for duty for such organization, corporation, or individual. So that being said, a special police officer in, in Brockton is selected by the chief or his designee. He is given the powers for whatever position that needs to be filled. So in, the, in, the, in this case, it's school police officers. So school police officers, are the, they're not civil service, such as all of us. We're a civil service police department. Um, school police officers are hired by the school department, paid for by the school department, but they come under the jurisdiction of the chief of police and his designee. So they go to the same academies that we all go to, they have full police powers in Brockton. They're only limited for a year. So after that year is up, we have to go through this, which we do every year. This is, this is something, you, I just took this over last year, so this is, uh, this is the first time that I've appeared before you guys to explain this, so bear with me. But normally, it would go through, through you guys, and then it would go forward through city council, and then I would just tell my offices we're good to go. You guys can go in and swear in the clerk's office during this shift. So it saves on time. So there's an expectation that all of these um, special police officers will be specifically school police officers. Do we use special police in any other capacity in Brockton? Yes, so they're school police officers. They can also do details uh, provided through the detail office. We also have retired police officers now that are specials which they have the same uh, requirements. They have to come in every year. They have to be re-sworn in every year, but then they have full police powers in the city of Brockton while they're doing details. Are any of these um, designated or stated special police officers, are any of them the retirees that you're speaking of or no? These here? No, these okay. are active school police officers. Okay. Employed by the school department, <coughs> paid for by the school department. Madam, uh, Madam President, I have no further questions. Okay, thank you, Council. Any other councilors have any questions? Move to oh. recommend favorably. Second. The motion's been made and properly seconded. All those in favor? All those opposed? The reappointments carry favorably to the full city council. Thank you. Thank Lieutenant. you very much. I appreciate thank you, very Lieutenant. Much. You have a good night. Madam Clerk, number 11. Order, acceptance and expenditure of the grant award in the amount of $14,015.80 from U.S. Department of Justice Fiscal Year 2019 Bulletproof Fest Program Grant to Brockton Police Department Fiscal Year 2019 Bulletproof Vest Program Grant Fund. Invited, Honorable Mayor Robert F. Sullivan, Troy Clarkson, Chief Financial Officer, Stephen Williamson, Interim Chief, Brockton Police Department. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, uh, Captain. This program, uh, this is from the Department of Justice. It's a, a grant that's used to cover the, uh, approximately 50 percent of the, well, actually it is 50 percent of the cost of, uh, of the new vests. Uh, that these are vests that are for new officers, and they're also for uh, officers that have had their vests for over five years. It's to replace old vests also. Councilors, any questions? Councilor Castro. Thank you. Good evening, Chief Williamson. Thank you for being here. Um, Captain. I, oh, that too. Um, <laughs> Clear that up. <laughs> thank you. I just wanted to comment that I had a question about this today because it didn't seem to square with me that 
it says the grant funds are used to reimburse 50% of the cost of the vests and no match is required. So I gave the grant coordinator, uh, Michelle St. James, a call. She was very nice. And she said that this is actually more than a grant, it's a reimbursement that uh, the department pays for the vest and then they reimburse us 50% of it. And it's to replace the plates, the plates inside the vest which make them bulletproof have to be replaced every five years or so. Well, it, I'm not sure exactly what she said to you, but the vest that we purchase uh, there's a shelf life on them of about five years. I, I don't know all the technical parts of it, but I believe that the material starts to break down after that. They can still wear them, but at some point they got to be replaced because they, they're just not going to work as well. All right. And it's one of those things that we don't know how well it's working until we need it. So it's recommended to replace these vests. Uh, there's also a plate in the front, but it, these are, I don't believe we're just replacing the plates. It's the whole vest. Okay. Uh, there's like a there's like a pocket here in the front. You could put a metal plate in mm -hmm. it. It gives you a little. It's a little uncomfortable, but it, it's more protection. Does the job. But they usually come with the vest, so I don't believe it's just for the plates. I think it's for the vest and the plate. Okay. Well, it just seemed to be a country contradiction that it said no match required but yet it was only 50 percent but it's a reimbursement is what it is and it's a terrific program thank you very much thank you all set council Councilor yes. cruz followed by Councilor thompson just a quick question not that it matters in passing it do the do the vests get fitted to the individual or are they generally i mean do, are they passed around shift to shift or no e each officer has his own vest they are fitted uh, we, the company that we're going to use, they'll come in and, you know, fit them almost like a tailor would. Uh, yes, okay. They don't just pass the vests around. Uh, yeah. No. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Council Thompson. Good evening, Chief. Um, so, from my understanding, uh, th this grant is is used to pay, or as you stated, uh, reimbursed, um, and we're we're expected to get 41 vests out of this. Is is that? Uh, yeah. I'm not sure about the number. The, the, the vests are quite expensive. I, I don't have a price on those, but they're so probably six to eight hundred dollars each, something like that. Yeah. Uh, so through the paperwork, that, memory. Yes, uh, for the application details that we received, I believe it says there's a grand total, uh, quantity-wise, for 41 vests. Um, so you, you stated that the, uh, the purpose is for new officers uh, who are coming on board and uh, those who have uh, vests that are five years or older. Does, does this um, grant, does that meet the full requirement of those specific people, the ones who are coming on and the, and the vests that are five years or older? No, no. It's my understanding that it only pays for about half of it in that we take the other half out of our budget. Right, well, I'm yeah. saying that the, it looks like a total of 41 is going to be purchased. I'm saying is the, the quantity, the 41 vests, will that meet the Brockton Police Department's requirements to outfit the uh, newly sworn in police officers and those who have vests that are five years or older? I, I believe it will. I'd have to check on that. Um, it's one of those, these are one of those things we come up with the money somehow. Uh, we'll take it from someplace else. I don't have the number in front of me of how many people are going to need a vest during this year. Okay. Uh, I do have that, you know, at work. Um, we're in the process of hiring also. So we're trying to hire 14, so they're going to need vests at some point. Um, probably not for about another six to nine months. But uh, I just want I, to answer your question. I think it. I think it will. Okay. But. I'd have to go back and verify those numbers. Yeah, I just want to make sure that our, our city is, is is taking care of, uh, you know, our police officers and making sure they're, they're not going to be sending new officers equipment. out without vests. Understood. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Chief. Motion to recommend favorably. Second. Second. A motion's been made and properly seconded. <clears throat> All those in favor? All those opposed? The order carries uh, back to the full city council favorably. Madam Clerk, number 12. Order, acceptance and expenditure of the grant award in the amount of $275,000 from Executive Office of Public Safety and Security, Fiscal Year 2018 Municipal Police Services Staffing Grant to Brockton Police Department, Fiscal Year 2018 Municipal Police Services Staffing Grant Fund. Invited, Honorable Mayor Robert F. Sullivan, 
Troy Clarkson, Chief Financial Officer, Steve, Stephen Williamson, Interim Chief, Brockton Police Department. Good evening again, Captain. And sorry, the agenda was printed before we had the new appointment of our new police chief. So, uh, good evening. Uh, good evening. Uh, this is a grant that we've been getting uh, for, for a few years now to, to varying amounts. Uh, last year, I believe it was 175,000. So this is a, an additional 100,000. Um, it's pretty w wide open what we can use it for. Uh, we use it mostly to staff the patrol shifts, uh, but we can use it for the walking beats. Uh, anything that it pretty wide range of, of, uh, of pretty much what we spend overtime on, we can use this grant. Any questions? Move for a favorable recommendation. Second. 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 A motion has been made and properly seconded. All those in favor? All those opposed? The order carries uh, favorably back to the full city council. Thank you. Thank you. Madam Clerk. Order, Tra total transfer of $20,000 from information technology full-time salaries, 20,000, to information technology overtime, 18,000, and to information technology out of state travel, 2,000. Invited, Honorable Mayor Robert F. Sullivan, Troy Clarkson, Chief Financial Officer, Bill Santos, Director of Technology. Good evening, Director. Good How evening, Councilors. Good evening, Council President. I'd like to um, just give you a, a quick understanding of what this is. Um, just over a, a year and a couple months ago, we had one of our employees in the Army Reserve. He was deployed, and um, so we lost him for about a year, and he's, he's back now and a lot of the work that he was involved in um, needs to be done after hours to pull equipment out of service and replenish it with newer equipment and so forth. And uh, our team has broken that work up over, over the last year, but uh, we're a little bit behind, so I'm requesting that part of that full-time pay that was not used in his absence be moved to overtime to complete the work and the $2,000 is for our Munis administrator to go out of state to a, uh, it's kind of like a job fair and a, and a, uh, a, uh, a Munis show where they show off the, the new modules and, and we decide whether they're useful for our city or not. Okay. Thank you, Thank councilors. Any questions? Motion to recommend for- Oh, Councilor Farwell. Yes. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Santos, let me preface my remarks by saying this is what I'm going to discuss now is not personal towards you. Uh, uh, it, it, this innocuous little transfer has really raised some very interesting issues that I think the mayor has to wrestle with and I think we as a council need to wrestle with it. And Mr. Uh, uh, mayor Sullivan, let me say none of this attaches to your administration. This has been going on for a long while. We, we have an ordinance, councilors, that it's section 2-327 that says, there shall be a department head appointed by the mayor subject to the approval of the city council on or before the first Monday in February, who shall hold office for three years from the first Monday in February of the year of his appointment until a successor is appointed to run the information technology department. Mr. Santos's title is actually Assistant Data Processing Systems Manager, is that correct? Yes. And is it also correct to say that either you've been asked or you are not interested in being the department head, is that correct? That's correct. Okay, and is it also fair to say that that's because your salary, according to the budget book, is $116,651, but if you were the department head, which is mandated by our ordinances, the top salary is $98,372. I'm, I'm not sure what that salary is for the director of technology. When I last knew about that in, uh, I don't know when it was, maybe in the 2005 or six, it was like $46,000 and, and I, and in the last round of um, negotiations with department heads, they did not even include me. So uh, I'm not sure what they've done with that position. Right. But, but the fact is you're in a union. Yes, I am. Okay. And the fact is that over the last 
two and two years and seven months. Counselor, I don't mean to interrupt you, but does this have, do you want, would you like to do a resolve and maybe have Mr. Santos come back before us, He's, maybe with I, personnel or? No, I mean, Madam we, Chairperson, he is asking for overtime and I'm going to tell you where it's gone and why I think he's asking for the overtime, which it, to me is completely inappropriate. We have a department head, for all intents and purposes, who is in the union and he is scheduling himself for overtime and he's approving it. And I never heard of such a thing. And that's what I want to probe tonight. I want the council to know what's going on because this clearly is not something that should happen in the city of Brockton. As the mayor said, we should run the city like a business. And Mr. Santos is asking for a transfer for his department for overtime. And in the last three years, he's collected 32,000 in overtime for, for F fiscal year 20 he has already collected $11,058, $11, which is almost what he collected in all of fiscal year 2019. Now, I suspect he'll say, colleagues, it's part of my collective bargaining agreement. That doesn't mean he has to take the overtime. You can't have it both ways. You can't have the authority and the responsibility to run a department and then turn around and say, but I'm going to schedule myself for overtime and I'm going to approve it. And what bothers me most is that when I contacted the city auditor about this several years ago when she was appointed the auditor, she was told that by the mayor at that time, don't ask for the reasons for the overtime. Don't ask for the reasons for the overtime. And as someone who, as you all know, takes financial issues very seriously, <coughs> I think the mayor has got to have a serious discussion with Mr. Santos if he wants to stay as assistant data processing systems manager. I have no problem with that. I don't question the quality of the work that's done. I question the fact that we don't follow our own ordinances and that administratively we have someone who's taking overtime, which to me could be apportioned among the other remaining employees. The top overtime earners, as a matter of fact, are uh, the top overtime earners are, one is 42625 the next one is 21000 Is the next one is Mr. Santos at 32 and the next one is 21000 and then everybody drops off from there. And it would seem to me the responsible thing to do would be for the department head to apportion the overtime across the other employees because at his salary level, the cost per overtime hour is very high. And, it, and that's exactly why we're here transferring money into overtime. And, and uh, I'm not going to vote favorable on this unless, and, and here he is, the mayor says, I will look into this and I will rectify this because I don't think someone should function as a department head, carry a different title, be in an entirely different union. By the way, if he had to discipline one of the people in, in his unit, it's his fellow union member. Now maybe I'm out of sync with what I think should be a common ordinary business practice, but this is not right. And uh, I, Mr. Mayor, I see you standing there. Councilor, you know, no, thank you, Councilor. Um, and rest assured, and, and you, you, you know me, Councilor, I, I will indeed look into it. When you mentioned this, I, I spoke to the CFO, and we, uh, we definitely will, in my office, look into this. Um, to determine, you know, what the next steps are, and then I'll come back and report back to you and to the full body. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. The, the, just as my final comment, then, with that representation, I will vote favorable uh, because I don't want that department to run out of overtime money that's needed to address information technology issues. But I appreciate the Mayor stepping up uh, with the CFO and indicating that we'll have a review of this. Thank you. Thank you, Council. Any other questions? Council Lally. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. I just wanted to, to say I, uh, I want to thank Council Farrell for, for bringing this up. Um, I'm going to vote favorably on this as well. Uh, one thing that we might look at is that, you know, the positions that are receiving so much overtime, uh, I don't know what those positions are, but it may be that these positions are you know different than the other positions in the sense of responsibility times they might need to be called in uh, or expertise so these people might not be called in because of 
um, a connection or because of you know the the status of the department it may be that they are actually just needed to, to solve an issue but it is uh, it is a big question mark and I think uh, Councillor Farrell was absolutely right that uh, we've probably gone over a full term of an absence in a department head so that is something that um, you know I that is something that I have every confidence that's every confidence that the mayor would look into because you know we we do know I mean we know his work ethic thank you council mayor I, I do want to just publicly say, I mean, um, Bill Santos has done excellent job uh, in his employment for the city of Brockton. I want to make that clear, and everybody can attest to that. Um, but you do bring up some points, and uh, as I said to Councilor at Large Farwell, Councilor Lelia, I will look into it, and then I'll, as the mayor, I'll come back and give an update and a, a report to the full body. But I just want to say, I mean, um, the IT department that we have, the men and women that work there up at Brockton High School in the core, they do yeoman's work. Um, can we do things better? Of course, but that's across the board. So this is an issue that I'm very, very happy you brought it to our attention, and, and we'll delve into it and do our uh, due diligence to get back to you. Thank you. Thank you, you again. Thank you. thank you. And I don't want to, uh, I don't want to you know, have any of my comments come off as, as anything insulting to, to Mr. Santos or to, or to you, because uh, you've both done excellent work. Uh, and that's, that's all I have, and I'd like to move favorable on this. Second. A motion's been made and properly seconded. All those in favor? All those opposed? <coughs> the order goes back favorably to the full city council. Thank you, Mr. Santos. And having served on the IT board for many years, um, you do great work, and we're, we, I support you. So we'll, we'll take care of this matter. Thank you. Um, Count, Madam Clerk. Number 14. Order. The acceptance and expenditure of the grant award in the amount of $12,030 from Mass Humanities Grant to Brockton Public Library. Invited, Honorable Mayor Robert F. Sullivan, Tory Clarkson, Chief Financial Officer, Paul Engel, Director, Brockton Public Library. Good evening, Mr. Engel. How are you? Good evening. I'm well. How are you? Good. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, this is a grant that, in, in conjunction with another uh, award from the Barbara Lee Foundation and State Aid uh, 9501 in the state budget, will fund uh, 40 events throughout the year uh, celebrating the centennial of the women's suffrage movement. Uh, it's called The Vote, a divided movement that brings us together. Uh, the events will range from being um, panel discussions to being uh, book displays to being uh, sign exhibits and, and, and things of that nature. Councilors, any questions? Motion, Motion recommend right. favorably. Second. Motion has been made and properly seconded. All those in favor? All those opposed? Thank you. And you see the water goes back. Free. Oh, my Councilor <laughs> Cardo. I just want to thank you for all your good work at the library and the programs there. We're just so blessed to have you and all that you do. So thank you very much. You're very welcome. Yep. Thank you, Ms. Dangle. So the order goes back favorably to the full city council. Madam Clerk, number 15. Order that the city council hereby amend the tax increment exemption agreement between the city of Brockton and 127 Center Corner LLC to read in section four, subsection A, the base value $423,800. Invited Honorable Mayor Robert F. Sullivan, Tory Clarkson, Chief Financial Officer. Good evening. Good Mayor. evening, Madam Chairman, members of, uh, of the committee. Um, just, just a quick synopsis on this. When I was sitting up there with you, we voted on this tie. At that time, it was for 297475 It was submitted, it was signed by then Mayor Rodriguez, submitted to the state. The state kicked it back to the city of Brockton saying, how did you come up with that figure? And what, what the figure that was presented to the last legislative council was the assessed value minus demolition costs, and it came to that 297475 State said, no, 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 City of Brockton, you cannot subtract a demolition cost. You have to go to the real assessed value. That's what's before you today. That's the hard assessed value by Mr. O'Donnell in the assessor's office. So that's why we're here today. Councilors, Councilor Cruz. Oh, thank you, and this may be for Mr. Claxon. So dollar-wise, how is this going to affect what this change? So the percentages will still remain the same of the t tie? Yes, Councilor, the percentages. So the agreement uh, stays the same in its entirety. Uh, with this adjustment, 
upward, the increment actually uh, would be reduced. So the, the amount that the city is, is giving up, so to speak, in the tax increment would be reduced very slightly because the, the uh, base value is increased. Okay. Uh, certainly, you know, if you remember when we presented this to you before, oh yeah, we did a <laughs> we did that the the graph where we actually showed the the projected amounts because it's it's all based on whatever the assessed value is right. at the time. We can certainly reproduce that, but by again by having the the value higher, uh, it's uh, the the amount of the increment I is, is lessened. I just want to make sure what we're changing is going to lessen the dollar amount, not that's correct. More of the city, we're not we're not creating more value for the building, it's, it goes in the city's favor. And, yeah, which yes, sir. The tie is in the city's favor to get the builder. I'm in favor of those, but we're not going the other way. So we're not giving up a larger dollar amount. Correct. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Councilor Castro. Thank you. Um, good evening. I've been speaking with Mr. Clarkson about um, when I was preparing for this meeting, I noticed that what we're amending was never signed by the applicants according to what I've been given or dated, even though it was approved by the city council in July of last year. So I've requested from Mr. Clarkson as well as from the applicant's attorney um, a copy of the fully executed contract so that I just can make sure of what the terms were that I'm amending. I mean, it's great, it's in our favor, but nonetheless, I want to make sure that it's real. Absolutely, Council. Mm -hmm. Thank you for bringing that to our attention. Thank you. We'll Mr. Do that. Clarkson has said he will work with me and get it for me, certainly, before our, our vote next week. He will. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Council. Move to recommend favorably. Second. Second. Motion's been made and properly seconded. All those in favor? All those opposed? The order carries favorably back to the full city council. Thank, Thank you, you, Mayor. Councils. Madam Clerk, number um, 16. Order, total transfer of $25,195.69 from Veteran Services, Purchases of Service, Other Services, to Veteran Services, Personal Services, Full-Time Salaries. Invited, Honorable Mayor Robert F. Sullivan, Tori Clarkson, Chief Financial Officer, David Farrell, Veterans Services Officer. Good evening, Mr. Farrell. Good evening, Madam President, Councilors. So this is uh, really a transfer to uh, fund a, uh, from part-time to full-time in my office, uh, a, uh, an assistant who will assume all the responsibilities of outreach that uh, had been uh, outsourced really to the VA uh, in the last three years. So it's the movement of that uh, money from other services to full-time salaries. Move favorable. Cruz. Hey, Dave, uh, so just, were we paying the VA for these services in the past or were they just- Yes, we, we were paying the so VA. So we were paying and now we're gonna have it in-house so you'll, yes. you'll be able to- Control the outreach. And control and yes. the person, that's great. Yes. Thank you. Well, motion was made and properly seconded. All those in favor? All those opposed? The motion carries favorably back to the full city council. Thank you, Mr. Barrow. Thank you. Madam Clerk, number 17. Order, acceptance and expenditure of the grant award in the amount of $200,000 from Department of Housing and Community Development, DHCD, 40R, Smart Growth Incentive, to City of Brockton, Planning and Economic Development, 40R, Smart Growth Activities. Invited, Honorable Mayor Robert F. Sullivan, Tori Clarkson, Chief Financial Officer, Rob May, Director of Planning and Economics Development. Good evening, Madam Chairman, uh, members of the council. As you know, if, if we kind of go back in time, uh, the Thatcher Street program, uh, I recused myself at all times because I had done legal work for the sisters, and I just want to state that again for the record. I did have a meeting um, just last week with Councilor Castro, Councilor Neri, and Rob May, um, specific about this issue. Um, again, under the under the 40-hour standard, the municipality gets $200,000. We've already gotten that. Uh, now, we're, the, through Rob's office, Mr. May's office, trying to figure out how to expend expend said money. So I know Councilor Nicastro had come up with some great ideas, and it was echoed the sentiments by Councilor Neri. So I just wanted to be here and, and support what Susan's going to what Council is going to talk about. Thank you, um, Councilor Nicastro. Thank you, Madam Chairman, Chairwoman. Um, 
at our meeting on Friday, we decided that we're going to table this order. I'll be making a, a motion in a moment. But just so that you all understand, um, we all decided that um, at the mayor's um, suggestion that we split the $200,000 that is coming in from the, as a result of the 40R project on Thatcher Street and 50% of it will go to the Department of Economic, uh, and Pl Economic Development and Planning to do some work um, on the Transit Village in Campello and that the other $100,000 would be held by the city in escrow um, anticipating some mitigation and to address issues that come up as the Thatcher Street pro project, excuse me, um, is, is developed. And that will be happening in the next um, 12 to, to 18 months. So at this time, I'd like to make a motion, unless someone has questions, I'd like to make a motion to table this order. Second. Second. A motion's been made to table the order. Uh, on the motion. On the motion, can't Council speak Rodriguez. On the motion. Can't. can't speak on the motion. Oh, okay. The motion to table has no discussion. So a motion's been made and properly seconded to, to table uh, I'd be willing to take my second back if the council has some questions. Yeah, I do. Okay. okay. The second's been taken back. Council Rodriguez. No, I just uh, uh, through you, Madam Chair, to the council from Ward 4, I mean, uh, to me it sounds like a legit uh, acceptance of funds. Why are we tabling the, if, if you have had a meeting with the mayor and the, and the parties involved to grab the $200,000 put half of it in one account, half in something else to, to uh, move forward. So why are we tabling this? That is what we're going to do. But we're going to table this order, which says 200000 to the Planning and Economic Development Department. And we're going to resubmit okay. um, paperwork that reflects what I just said. OK. OK? Thank okay. you, Madam Chair. Second on the motion now. Thank you. <laughs> motion has been made and properly second to table this, um, this order. All those in favor of tabling? All those opposed? The order is tabled. Thank, Thank you, you. Councilors. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Clarkson, um, for being here this evening. And, um, Councilors, any you know comments? Uh, Councilor Cruz. Uh, thank you. Just to the members of the Ordinance Committee, next Tuesday evening, February 11th, 6 o'clock in this chamber, we'll be having our first Ordinance Committee meeting. Uh, obviously, every council is invited. And uh, there are two agenda items the sewer rate increase and the uh, uh, the expansion of the uh, solicitors full time. So six, uh, February 11th, 6 o'clock in this chamber. Thank you, Thank Councillor. You. Any other? Councillor Nicastro. Thank you. Good evening. Um, I have two things, and the first one is uh, this weekend I had the opportunity to attend Fab Fest 2020 at Brockton High School. Three one act plays that were directed by students and performed by students. Absolutely wonderful. I want to extend congratulations and kudos to everyone who was involved. It was just a terrific evening of performance by our children. And the second thing is, I'm going to be hosting um, a neighborhood meeting this Friday night from 6.30 until 7.30 at the Gilmore School. There is a project proposed at 1208 Montello Street. It's the corner of Montello and Riverside. 32 units, it's a vacant piece of property right now. And I'm inviting all my neighbors and anyone else who is interested to come in and uh, listen to the developer's presentation, look at the plans, and talk to us about their concerns. Thank you. Thank you, Council. Council Fowell. Thank you, Madam Chair. I was asleep at the switch over here. On February 12th, from 6.30 until 8, the first Councilor at Large meeting will take place in the Arnone School Theater. Um, I've invited uh, Council President and the Mayor to, to come in and introduce Ooh. themselves to those who attend, and the Is principal the speaker will be uh, School Six. Superintendent Michael Thomas and the school CFO, Aldo Petronio, about the implications for the new funding that we will be receiving here in the city. So again, that's the 12th of February from 6.30 until 8 at the Unknown School Theater. And we look forward to anyone else who wants to join us. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor. Thank you, Councilors. With no further business this evening, this meeting's adjourned.